It is a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Bill Moore from DentalPhotographyMadeEasy.com. And uh, I've been a big fan of your website. Uh, Bill is not a dentist. He's a professional photographer. Bill teaches intraoral dental photography to dental labs and practices. His workflow is simple, easy, and created for the non-photographer. Bill knows how your camera works and guides you step-by-step through the set-it-once-and-forget-it process that will immediately transform your camera from a source of frustration into a useful tool. You'll get in focus, properly exposed, color-accurate images each and every time. Bill was a session speaker at the 2014 Rocky Mountain Dental Convention and teaches dental photography to dental practices and labs around the country. He's refined his course with the input from many doctors and now offers it as an online course. So how did you go from photography and taking, I guess, wedding pictures and graduation pictures to just dentistry? Well, I kind of stumbled into it, to be honest with you. Um, I was having some dental work done, and my uh, dentist sent me to a lab for a shade matching appointment. And part of the shade matching process, the ceramist was taking dental images, and I could tell she was struggling with the camera. She didn't know I was a photographer. And um, I started asking questions about the lighting and what she was doing with the camera, and she put the camera down and said, wait a minute, Bill, (laughs) what's going on here? And I said, well... It looks like you're having trouble. I'm a photographer. I understand how to do all this stuff. I can help you. And she introduced me to one of the owners of the lab, and I ended up revamping their entire digital imaging process from taking the pictures to uh, displaying them color accurately on their monitors to printing them color accurately um, because they did use prints as part of their manufacturing process. So um, that kind of got the ball rolling. I, I love photography. I love to teach. Um, and it just seemed like a perfect fit to me. And doctors, dentists are great people to work with. I agree. My homies are class act people. You know, it's, uh, I get so, you know, it's so easy to lie with statistics. And so many times you see about these charts that, you know, that American wages haven't changed in 10, 20, 30 years, but you know, they, they just lie with statistics, but you know, we're both in our fifties when we were little, just, I mean, only rich people had cameras you had to buy film, you had to take pictures, you wouldn't get instant feedback, you'd go get it developed, and then two weeks later, of your roll of 12, you know, five of them or six of them, you couldn't even tell what the picture was, <laughs> and when you see these people taking pictures on their iPhone and sending them and texting them and emailing them and put them on social media, and you see that, you know, on a, on a person's Facebook page, they might have more pictures posted in one month than everybody who was... Um, an adult when I was uh, 15 years old that had in their lifetime. Yeah. So, so, t- so it's same thing with music. Remember when we were little, you'd save up three months for one album and you'd split it <laughs> with your five sisters. And now people have a, you know, a thousand songs on their iPhone. So um, is there a way to um, just buy your way to success uh, with, is there just like, if you just bought the perfect camera, is it uh, easier to do or use or? That's a great question. And it, it's, Sort of, I guess, is my answer, because the cameras that I recommend, uh, I don't recommend every camera under the sun. There are billions of them, it seems like. So I think that's one frustration that doctors have, right, is what to buy. And I, there's a certain level of equipment that I recommend getting because the camera bodies have the features that can, once they're set properly, make the whole process really a pretty much a point and shoot process. So, um, you know, I recommend a couple of cameras, a Canon and a Nikon and, uh, you know, lens and and flash and that sort of thing. And that's really the first big problem I found that the doctors have is picking a camera system. You know, you can take, you can spend a little less money than I recommend and take wonderful dental images, but the process might be a little more cumbersome and a little more complicated. So um, I'm all about making things easy. I like things in my life to be easy. And um, I want to avoid that problem because I've, I've talked to doctors who've come to me with a camera that they purchased, uh, you know, a, fla- a camera flash and lens. And they say, hey, Bill, help me make this work. Um, and that's what I don't want to have happen because a lot of times they end up on the shelf collecting dust. Well, see, now I'm confused because when I listen to Outcast saying, uh, hey, yeah, shake it like a Polaroid camera, <laughs> shake it like a Polaroid picture, I thought we were – remember the old Polaroids where you shake oh, yeah. it? 
When that oh, yeah. song came out, it was so funny to hear so many younger kids say, "What you know? That, what is he talking about?" And it's like, uh, "Yeah, they uh, that pol- do they even still make those Polaroid? Shake it like a Polaroid." You know, they're they're coming back. They're kind of a retro thing now, and and I think a lot of millennials are picking them up, going, "Wow, this is kind of cool." So. <laughs> <laughs> I I can still remember it was a big box, and you put it yeah. in the box the film, and it was it was the thing I liked about the Polaroid camera, which now dentists have every day is the instant feedback right because when we were little we'd take it down to uh skags and you'd you'd give it to them and they'd say okay come back in two weeks Mm -hmm. and then in two weeks later your family friends the wedding's over the birthdays you know and and it was so nice to have a polaroid picture but uh five years uh ten years later that polaroid picture uh uh, the colors changed didn't they Oh, yeah. It, it, you see that all the time with old photographs. So when you talk about a Canon and Nikon, is there a certain number or brand number or serial number on the Canon and Nikon? Yeah, the models that I recommend, and, and I have these listed on my website. Uh, is Dentalphotographymadeeasy.com. Correct. But you also have BillMorePhotography.com. Bill Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Um, what, what's the difference between those two websites? Well, the Dental Photography Made Easy site is just for dental photography. And so it's all about a, being a one-stop place for doctors to go to to learn about dental photography. And I have a curriculum on there, really, not just a course, um, where you can just learn the basics, what camera to buy, um, learn how to use it by taking a photography course and then learn how to leverage the images because that's really important in a practice, right? You, you don't just want to take these great images. You want to use them in consultations and, and um, you know, when you're referring patients to other doctors and, and that sort of thing to, and, and really improve your case acceptance rate. And that's really what it's all about. How, but, how, um, much, is, how much is that course? How long is it? Um, more more well, details. Oh, okay. Well, uh, do you want me to answer the first question first or get into the... Yeah, whatever, whatever you want to do, buddy. Okay. All right. So to get back to the answer to the which cameras I recommend, um, on the Nikon side, I recommend the D7200. Um, that's the camera body. And if you go to dentalphotographymadeeasy.com and go to recommended cameras, you'll see it on there. And you can actually purchase it through my site at B&H Photo in New York. Um, and right now, I looked it up today, that camera body, the lens and the flash, it's a 105 millimeter lens and a Sigma ring flash, which is the easiest flash to really start out with as a ring flash. It was 2633. Um, and... On the Canon side, they just came out not too long ago with a great little body, the 80D. And the reason I recommend that those two on the Canon, Canon on the Canon is side. the 80D. Yes. Okay, 80D. Okay. Of course, one starts with a D and then a number. The other starts with a number and then a D. So you even put the, the lenses on backwards. On, that, that, on does the D yeah. stand for anything? Is... Digital. Oh, right. digital. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my walnut brain instantly thought dental. Ah, well, it does stand for dental in our case, doesn't it? Um, so, but the reason I recommend those two bodies, and you might laugh when you hear this, but um, they both have a feature that allows you to save and store all of the camera settings in one location. So at the turn of a dial, you can recall all of them. So imagine a doctor sitting in their office, they take a test shot, um, an intraoral shot, and they look at the, and I teach you in this, in the course, how to determine if the exposure is correct. They look at the exposure, they go, wait a minute, something's off. Then they have to go and figure out which settings off, where the setting is in the vast (laughs) menu system on these cameras, and then figure out or remember what the setting is supposed to be, right? So the reason I say dental photography made easy is I want to make it simple. So these two cameras have, if you've run into that situation, a place where you can just turn a dial one way and back to a setting, and all those settings that we dial into the camera during the course fall right back into place and you're up and running. It takes a second. The patient's not sitting there going, oh, does this guy or gal know what they're doing? Um, so those are the reasons I recommend 
those camera bodies. One of the main reasons on Canon, uh, or excuse me, on Nikon, they're called user settings. And on Canon, it's called custom shooting mode, and there's two of them. So you can store your intraoral settings in one and your um, extra oral, or well, I call them dental portraits on another, you know, where you take beautiful after images of, of your work where you want to put uh, big prints on the wall in your waiting room and that kind of thing. So the, those are the two bodies that have those features. Okay, when you when you say body, that that's that's the uh, the box. It does not include the lens or the. Uh, you said ring flash. The opposite of that is a point flash. Is it? Uh, well, it's a usually a dual flash. So there would be two lights that are attached to the front of the lens with a dual headed flash system. And that one, you can take beautiful images and actually get really creative with the lighting, but there's a longer learning curve for those. Um, Cause the uh, heads, flash heads have to be pointed the right way. And there are a lot of other considerations with the ring flash is pretty much, you put it on the front of the lens and it's a ring of light that is uh, shot out into the mouth or wherever you're aiming the camera. And it's much easier, much, much quicker to learn. Yeah, they, uh, you know those barcode scanners? Yep. Uh, somebody had patented in the circle, which scans so much easier because of the light. Mm -hmm. But he wanted so many gazillions of dollars for it that all the other retailers went with the flat. So we still have that square flat code, even though the round barcode is uh, – it, it, it probably costs the country, you know, billions of dollars a year in missed scans and all that stuff. But uh, So the ring flash is just easier. It is. Because and, the way light bounces and works. Well, it's, it, there isn't as much that you have to think about with it. You can still get creative with it lighting-wise, but that's kind of down the road once you're comfortable making intraoral images. So, yeah, there are three components to kind of get to your, your point. There's, there's the camera body, and that's basically a little computer nowadays that you attach the lens to. And then the flash um, has a component that goes on the top of the camera, and the flash itself attaches to the uh, end of the camera lens. So um, that makes up the camera system, and you can see the ones that I recommend under my recommended cameras on dentalphotographymadeeasy.com. Okay, I'm there right now. I see bonus video course, online course, one-on-one -on -one course. Am I, do I scroll down farther? Uh, no, at study? the top of the screen. It's at the very top? Yep, it says recommended dental camera bundles. Oh, I see it. I'm on. I'm on my iPhone. Okay, recommended. Okay, ah, there, there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's going to be hard to see on your iPhone. It's, yeah. There's, okay. there's a lot of stuff there. So, so um, not to ask a really stupid question, but for all intents and purposes, is film gone? I mean, is there? You know, it's really interesting because among ph the photography community, um, there are still people that shoot film for various reasons, and it has a different feel to it visually than digital uh, images. Dig digital images are so clean and so crisp, there's nothing um, <laughs> that doesn't come through in them with the right camera and taking them the right way. So, but, you know, the beauty but in of... A, but in a dental office... Oh, yeah, there's no reason to be shooting film in a dental office, um, you know, because, well, for a couple of reasons. One you mentioned earlier, and that is the learning process is so much quicker because you can see instantly what you did. And the way I teach um, intraoral photography, there's a little graph called a histogram that each camera um, produces for every single image you take. And that's kind of your camera's light meter. And if you have the back of your camera set so that every time you take an image, the image comes up on the back of the camera, you can set it so the histogram comes up as well, and you can instantly tell if the exposure is correct. You never want to go by how the photograph looks on the back of the camera. But that's what I, you know, I teach in my course. And so it's a very underused but very powerful tool among the dental community. And, and let me, let me before you start explaining a lot of stuff, I just want to remind my homies out there that the people that have a canned website that, you know, that you just bought it and you change the names and the address and the email and there's a link to Twitter and Facebook or whatever, um, that's, that's just dead on arrival. The consumers are so sophisticated and they want to see your work. And you go to... 99% of the websites out there, it's just a canned website. I mean, yeah. 99%. And then you look at the dentist that listens to someone like you 
and starts photographing before and afters for, it could be implants, veneers, bleaching, but not just cosmetic, but big time cases. Mm -hmm. And all my friends that do that, their patients are jumping on an airplane and they, they found them and they're thinking, well, you know, I, I live in little old Parsons, Kansas. I'm, I'm going to go to the big city, Kansas City, because I found this guy at the website and this dentist said he wanted to do an implant. And I, 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 don't, I don't really know if he's really good at it. And I found this other website. He had like 10 before and after cases on there of his own work. And I especially see it in cosmetic dentistry, I mean in cosmetic surgery, um, where girls will say they went to a plastic surgeon and they gave him a brochure pr printed from the American Academy of Cosmetic whatever. And then they, they end up uh, with this one guy who sits down there with you and shows you 50 before and after cases of the exact procedure that you're looking for. Yep. And they, he, and and also that guy is very interesting. The uh, the procedure I'm talking about in Phoenix is thirty nine fifty for almost everywhere, and he charges eight thousand bucks. And and he's just the consumers convinced. You go to his website, my God, that looks amazing. I'm going to pay twice as much and wait three months to get in. And so dental photography on uh, on a world that's gone digital, there's no more yellow pages and all this crap. It, it's that's right. website. It's social media and people, um, people who are doing these work. I've even had some dentists on here talking about uh, uh, full mouth implants and everything because I, I post these on YouTube and they're emailing me back. Dude, I've been getting patients from this. I mean, I thought this was a dental <laughs> podcast and I'm getting patients that saw that video because they're being interviewed. So it looks like a third person's interviewing. So they must be an expert. I mean, there's 2 million dentists in the world. So why am I talking to this guy about implants? He must know more than someone else. So, uh, so dental photography is uh, such a huge, valuable proposition uh, for for your marketing on your website. Would you do you agree with that? Disagree? I, I totally agree with it. And and even further, imagine sitting down with a patient chair side or in a consultation room, and just you've just taken a series of photos of of their problem in their mouth. And they look at their photographs, and they dentists tell me that this always happens. They go that looks horrible. I want you to fix it. And then you say, okay, well, here are other cases that I've worked on just like yours. And here's what I was able to do, what you were just talking about. And you show the beautiful work that you can do. You can, like you're saying, your, your price for that process, procedure may need to increase, you know, uh, because people will be knocking on your door more than you can handle. Um, so I totally agree with that. Um, and, you know, if you're going for your, uh, and it's, well, the other part of it is so easy to do, so easy to do, um, because, you know, when you, when you take a course like I offer, it turns your camera into a point and shoot tool, basically. You don't have to worry about, oh, for this patient, I need to change the settings this way. I really understand how these cameras work. And, you know, I, I did a survey on Dentaltown. I said, what's the, what are the most um, problems, what are the problems you've had with dental photography? And um, they came out with a couple of things. Let me just grab that real quick here. So I said, uh, are your images underexposed, overexposed? Do you have inaccurate color? Are they out of focus? Or does your flash have a mind of its own? And it was <laughs> almost, um, almost equally distributed among those. Uh, so people are having problems with all these different topics. Under and overexposure is easy to fix. Inaccurate color is so easy to fix. So if you're communicating with your lab via um, digital images, you want your color to be correct. There is a thing called a custom white balance you set once in your camera. It's stored in that memory location I mentioned. So every time you make a dental image, doesn't matter which operatory you're in, doesn't matter what part of your office you're in, the uh, exposure is going to be right, the color is going to be accurate. Then, you know, people are saying, well, I've got a lot of out of focus images. And that's because the focus mode is not set properly on the camera. I find a lot of doctors have been taught to basically let the camera pick the focus point in the mouth. And so it might or might not pick the right spot. And in my method, you pick the right, you actually move the focus point around in the mouth until it's right on the right spot. You take it, nothing's ever out of focus. And the flash, you know, people say these flashes don't work. Well, they're working exactly as they were intended to work, as they were made to work, but you have to set them up 
to work properly. So it's really important that um, you know you use the cameras properly, you have them set up properly, and um, it's so easy to do. And then you can take make uh, you can get the benefit of these wonderful chair side or co consultation room consultations with your patients. Your case acceptance is going to increase. Um, you know, all of that stuff is just going to going to roll for you. Well, and the dentist, it's um, you know, they they'll go spend a hundred hours learning how to do a filling. But when you look at the insurance data, every time a dentist diagnoses a hundred fillings, they only fix thirty eight. So uh. you could almost argue that you're not even a dentist. You're you're a ghost because it's a 62% chance you won't do any dentistry and only a 38% chance you'll do dentistry. So on the balance, you're really not a dentist two-thirds of the time. You, they, you've got to get them to focus more on the treatment presentation, the case acceptance, and almost no dentist track their uh, case presentation. They don't track their case acceptance. But, but if you said, um, oh, here's a marketing deal. Give me 5000 bucks, and I'll send a flyer to everybody in your neighborhood. It's like it's like two-thirds of their business has gone out the door, and they always want to solve it by getting getting more three more people to treat one more patient. Right. So, so yeah. So, um, I, in fact, I would have called your course Dental Photography Marketing Made Easy or Dental Photography <laughs> Case Acceptance Made Easy. I mean, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just so important. So, well, that's really the third um, – part of my basic curriculum, if you will, track one of my curriculum. So it includes three pieces. One is, is getting the right camera, getting the right equipment. The second is how to, how to use the equipment, and that's the Dental Photography Made Easy course. And the third course is a one-on-one -on -one where um, it, I help you actually leverage the images that you make. So I uh, actually set up some software that you use to down, import your images to and download and um, show your Im images to your patients. Uh, and you can even from that software email images to other doctors, um, uh, export them to be imported into your patient management application, whatever you're using. Um, so leveraging them is the critical part of it. Taking beautiful pictures is great, but you need to get the benefit of them. Just so my homies don't have to think as much, because they got they, the problem with the dentist is you're a small business owner and you wear so many hats. I mean, you got to uh, be a absolutely. dentist. Yeah. There's way too many procedures to learn. You can't master them all. Um, if they just said, um, "Come on, Bill, uh, Nikon or Canon? I don't want to think about it. Um, make it easy for me." Is there? Do you have a favorite or not really? Uh, they're, they'll both make wonderful dental images. Uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion. Oh, I like Canon better. I like Nikon better. If you're starting from scratch, it really makes no difference. I can are, make the beautiful image with either one. Are those both Japanese? Yes, they are. Yeah, you uh, might, I wonder if it's even made in the same factory. <laughs> well, I read well, it. I, I read it. I read it. I, seriously, I read an article in The Economist that the entire planet only has one BCR factory on Earth. And so no matter what brand you buy, it's made in the same factory. Yeah. And the same thing, uh, I don't want to get in a – too much trouble here, but you know digital X-rays, the sensors. Mm -hmm. I think I believe there's only like three X-ray sensor plants on Earth because it's about a billion dollar investment. And I have literally seen because it's pointed out to me by by their owners where these people are advertising that theirs is better than the other guys for all these reasons, and they're like, we buy them from the same place. <laughs> we buy them from yeah. the same place, and you have yeah. the nerve to tell me that yours is better than mine when we both get them, you know, and slap a name on them. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, it wouldn't even surprise me if Canon and Icon were the same factory. Yeah, um, and they're within, you know, three hundred dollars of each other. So, uh, so um, you talked about the difference between ring flash and point flash with the two lights. Um, I think another question uh, they're wondering is. Um, is extra oral, intra oral in the mouth, and extra oral the same camera, the same technique, or is that two different uh, disciplines? Is one like a root canal and one's a crown, or yeah, that's the a, same thing? That's a great question. Um, basically, the difference is the lighting. The lighting that you use to make intraoral photographs makes very unflattering extraoral photographs or headshots. Um, and so you can use the same camera, but you can use a, a different flash for the extra oral images. Now, if you're just taking uh, a photograph of the mouth, you know, smile and that sort of thing, then, yeah, you don't want to spend the money and get a different flash. But if you want to have 
after photos that we've been talking about to say, oh, well, this, you know, look how happy they look because of the work I've done and look how beautiful their teeth are, then you want to light it a little differently. Um, so there are different ways to do it. Everything from putting a, another flash on top of the camera, which means you'd have to switch it out. Um, I've seen doctors that have two different camera setups. I don't necessarily think you need to do that because there are ways to have that extra oral flash off camera and you can wirelessly fire it from your camera and use those settings, uh, the U1, U2 uh, uh, custom shooting mode kind of settings on the camera that I mentioned. So it's just the turn of a button, have everything turned on and that flash will fire at the right power. So there are a lot of ways to do it. And there was a, um, a doctor in Lafayette, Colorado. She had me set up a whole studio <laughs> in her office and she's making incredible uh, after photographs of her patients now, you know, professional quality, absolutely. So it, it needs to be a different lighting setup if you're trying to leverage the images to answer your question. Um, but I don't think uh, you need to invest in two separate camera systems. I've seen people do it though. Um, one of the one of the things when the internet came out, we started Dental Town in 1998 because I just saw the the total value of the internet is we don't have to be alone again, uh, we can share. And so a lot of times the dentists don't know what they're doing in their office. Is that how everybody else is doing? I would think, I would think if, in my mind, I don't want to do any of what you're talking about. I want my assistant Jan to do it all. Right. When, on your courses. Are you working more with the assistant so she can do all this, or, or do you not believe that and or believe in that and think, no, this is something the dentist has to own. The dentist, she does the root canal. She needs to do the photos. It's part of the whole case presentation acceptance, or can I delegate this out? What, 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 what's the, the percent balance you're seeing, delegate versus do yourself? Well, I, I see it's, it's – it, well, I, the percentage is, is an interesting question, but I leave that decision, first of all, up to the doctor. Like you said, they're a small business owner. Everybody works a little bit differently. Um, and I've seen uh, – and by the way, the course is available to everyone in the practice once you, once you purchase or enroll in the course. Everyone can watch it. It's online. Uh, it's all video instruction. Um, so you could train your – anyone in your staff to do the photos. Um, but I've seen some doctors that are just kind of anal like me and <laughs> they want to control everything and they do it. Um, I'd say probably 60, 40, uh, 60 percent have some doctor and or their staff do it. And 40 percent, maybe a little lower than that, might just be the doctor alone. So I'm in the majority. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I encourage You know what that. they say, beware of the masses, because if you remove the M, you're just hanging out with the asses. But uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a total delegate of that. My, another question um, I think my homies are be wondering is, uh, um, you know, dental offices are small. Mm. Uh, you know, do you do, do you recommend that you just do these at the chair with the background being a dental chair? Or do you recommend that somewhere in your office you get a background or take them out? And I'm just going to keep throwing all the other questions. Uh, some people um, believe that um, the room you take the picture in should have a window for sunlight. Other people believe that's crazy. And then some people I hear on Dental Town saying you can take out your fluorescent tubes and put in uh, full spectrum tubes. Is that enough questions for one question at a time? <laughs> it, it is. It is. So let me. Are you uh, going to remember any of those? Well, I, I'll I'll give it a try. First of all, taking the fo uh, pictures in the chair with the chair as a background. Um, a lot of doctors do that very effectively. I don't like to do it that way because number one. Um, the background can be a distraction, but the shutter speed that I recommend using um, in the settings for for intraoral photographs get rid of that problem. So you're not you're, everything's going to be black, other than the mouth that's lit properly. So, but the issue that you get into is the angles that you gotta uh, you know uh, get to to photograph someone in a chair if they're in a dental chair if they're sitting in a chair with um, you know, a backdrop behind them, and that can be very inexpensive, then it's much easier. And it's now, easy a backdrop, you mean just something like a pull down, like, like, a, like a, um, off the ceiling, just something that you pull down? 
Yeah, or it could be uh, fabric hanging on a pole that looks appropriate for an office, of course. You don't want to have something that looks homemade there. Um, that's all you need. And you don't really need that unless you're going for accreditation or you want some, you know, you, you're putting stuff on your website. Then you want the images to look as good as possible. So you don't want any distractions in the background, especially, you know, with the headshots. So um, I like to put the patient in a chair where they can sit upright and you can be right in front of them, you know, and get the right angle. Otherwise, the image might be slightly off angle and that sort of thing. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, and so, some of these pictures of uh, courses you see, the, the person is having them set. You, you see big, big, um, you know, two foot, three foot extra oral lights. You, you see these big lighting things. Is that is that worth the money or is that? Well, you can do it cheaper than that. Um, and I kind of alluded to that earlier where you can have an off-camera flash made by, you know, if you have Sony, you're going to have to have a Sony flash. If you have Canon, you're going to have to ca have a Canon flash with a small modifier on it to soften the light because that's why the intraoral um, flashes don't look good for the head shots or the extra oral shots because they have a very harsh, strong light. You may have seen pictures with a person in their um, – uh, shadow, strong shadow behind them. You don't want that because that's real harsh light. So um, there's ways to do it. Uh, it's kind of complicated to get into, but it's it's pretty easy to set up. Um, now, when you get to the window in the room, um, you want to control the light. This is this is a really important thing. And so having a window next to the patient is totally unnecessary. Um, and having color balanced lights in the room, if you have the camera set properly, you were talking about taking out the fluorescent tubes and changing with color balanced light, which mimics outdoor sunlight, isn't really necessary. Now that does come into that does come in handy when you're trying. You have a shade tab up to a patient's mouth, and you've got green and bluish fluorescent light in the room, you're not going to get an accurate color match that way. So having um, a window you can walk the patient over to or um, uh, color balanced lights in the room for shade matching is a really good thing. But the way I have you set up the camera and because we use a custom white balance, which gets rid of any color cast in the image, you're going to have accurate color every time. You don't need to worry about that, those two things with my method. And what, there was one more. Was there another question? Oh, it, yeah, it was a question in the uh, the Green Day song, uh, Boulevard Broken Dreams, where he says, my shadow's the only one that walks beside me. Uh, my shadow always walks behind me, but it always leaves me at nighttime. I never have figured that out. Ah, okay. Well, no, he didn't. He didn't fix that in the song. So you're saying you don't need you don't need the full spectrum lights. You don't need a window, which is good because a lot of times we have patients at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. and it's dark anyway. Right. And I, I I love also the way um, this, you know the the only secret to lower price is lower cost, and it always seems like you have a you always have an eye on cost. Absolutely. I mean, it's a business decision to do this, right? And so, and it's an investment that you write off over a period of time. Um, I happen to think that an investment in the proper camera system that's going to make it easy for everyone to do, you pick up the camera, you take a test shot, yep, everything's good, boom, 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 you do what you need to do, is a good investment. And well, then, you know what you need to do on your website? You know where you say you can buy that Nikon for twenty six thirty three. Mm-hmm. You got to talk. You got to make dental terms. You got to say for the price of a root canal buildup and crown, <laughs> because that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's twenty six hundred dollars is an is an hour and a half root canal buildup and crown, and for the price of a root canal buildup and crown, you can start photo documentation. And the reason you want to photo document is because if a fireman only put out thirty eight percent of the fires, they'd fire him in a week. And dentistry, yep. we do this as a sovereign profession decade after decade after decade. They've got to get their close rate down. They've got to get their case acceptance up. Um, I don't care. I would rather – you know, they always talk about what's better, silver fillings or composite tooth-colored fillings. Mm -hmm. I'd, rather, I'd rather we don't do any fillings and just always remove the decay and then pack the tooth with butter because that would be better for the patient to get rid of all the infection. Um, they, 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 you know, so – and then the – Third thing is marketing. They always want to do all this sophisticated marketing, but the consumer is getting extremely sophisticated. Absolutely. And I don't know a single 
practice doing two to four million a year that's not doing what you're doing and putting it on the website. And you go to the website, I mean, and you just start seeing, wow, yeah, grandma needs implants and look at these. And, and even if they don't even know what they're looking at, they just see this person, she's showing her own work. And right. they're getting in cars and driving hours. They're getting in airplanes. I mean, it's just amazing how powerful this is because people want trust. And seeing is believing. And they, they, they want to see Bill Moore's work. They don't want to see some pamphlet you bought from the American Dental Association. They want to see, you know, the best way to say, oh, yeah, we can do this, is just show them 10 other cases just like it that you've already done. Yeah, and, and if I'm going to spend a, an amount of money with a comma in it, then <laughs> then I want to see some work. I want to see some stuff that you've done, and and if it doesn't look good, I'm going to kind of go, eh, I don't know about that. I like that. I like that comma. I never uh, I never said the comma. I always uh, I always got rid of the three zeros and called them chunks. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, a thousand's good. a chunk. You know, ten thousand is ten chunks. That's a, a but. So another thing. Um, my job is to guess questions they're asking. I, I imagine in this, uh, the United States has um, 950,000 MDs and over 1 million attorneys. Um, I'm scared of taking my patient's picture and putting it on my website and then biting me. How do, how do I get permission from grandma uh, to put her uh, implant venture on my website and my Facebook page and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram or whatever you're doing? Yeah, you should definitely get a release, um, and it's a very simple one-paragraph kind of thing. You have uh, it on your website? I do not, but I can certainly get that for you. Can you uh, post it on that thread on Dentaltown? I absolutely can. Yeah, because um, – Oh, go ahead. Well, well the dentists live in fear of attorneys. I mean, whether they're the state board, malpractice, I mean, it's, it's always – they're always coming after people with money. You know, they don't, they don't sue the guy pushing the weed eater. <laughs> uh, they they they, yeah. they always come after that. So so there, it's a one paragraph form, it basically, and you have you get them to sign it, and you have to specify what the use of the photograph is going to be for, um, and uh, it's very easy to do. And and you know people. Uh, in this day and age especially, they love to have their photograph done, and they love to have their picture online. For so, I don't. I'm not that pretty, so <laughs> I don't. Oh, man, we're bald. We got it. We got it. The bad. We could never have a bad hair day. There you the go. Humidity never makes my hair frizz. Yep. I thought, I thought going bald was so awesome to me because people say, oh, dude, you're losing your hair. I said, yeah, I lost my shampoo, my conditioner, my comb, my brush, my, uh, you know, it was, and I also uh, saved uh, 10 minutes every morning. I but, hear uh, you. So, 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 have you seen many litigious uh, problems from? Uh... You know, I really haven't heard of any. Um, I always encourage when a doctor is going to say, "I'm going to put these online." I always say, "We'll get permission from the patient," because, like you said, uh, w true or not, they're going to envision you as having deep pockets, right? And you don't want to be in that situation. And, and they do they do have deep pockets. I mean, dentists are always whining about uh, how much <laughs> student loans they have and, and their income. And I, I you always have to remind them that the, the median household income in the United States, I mean, it's 330 million people living in 100 million homes, is under 50 grand. Yeah. So if a dentist made 150 grand, she's making more than three houses of all the people that live in the house. Mom, dad, the kid at Taco Bell, everybody throws their, their money in a pot. And, and, and that's why dental school, no matter how much they raise their tuition, that's why they keep raising the tuition because they'll sell out every class. I mean, mm -hmm. who would not go trade four years and 350 grand to make a job where the average Yahoo makes $175,000 a year. And lawyers know that they're always going after, uh, physicians, other lawyers. Now, that's what I love the most. The number one fastest growing lawsuit now is the lawyer suing lawyer. So now the, the piranhas <laughs> have all turned on each other. Maybe they'll spend so much time killing each other, they'll leave all the dentists and physicians alone. <laughs> one can only hope. So yeah. what happens if I take your course um, and I'm the 60% uh, the that says, no, my assistant's going to do it, and then she gets stuck? Well, I have – three ways to enroll in the course. One is to just uh, enroll and watch all the videos and you have those for a lifetime. So you how can many, always- how many, how many videos and how long are each one? Uh, there are, let me see, I haven't counted those videos. Let me go to this website. There's uh, 
eight modules. Uh, I tried to keep the videos, you know, 10 to 15 minutes at most. Uh, some go a little longer. The demonstration part, maybe this is a good way to put this. So basically the course uh, Dental Photography Made Easy course covers a few things. The first is image management. How do you get the images off your camera onto your computer in a way that you can find them again, right? And retrieve them and use them the way you need to. And then I go through the optimal camera settings. I say, okay, what is ISO shutter speed aperture? Um, what is metering mode, focus mode? How do you set all that stuff on your camera? So the course is brand specific. There's one for Nikon on there right now. The Canon course is going to be out before the end of the month, and I've got an offer for your dental town folks if, they're in, if you're interested in hearing that. Um, so you actually go through how to set the camera up with those specific settings. So once you go through module two, two your camera's totally set up, they, everything's saved and dialed in. Then we go to how to tame your flash, and the same thing, how your flash works, whether you're doing a ring light or a a dual flash, how to set it. Um, then we get into how to check your exposure as you shoot. I mentioned earlier that there's a little graph you can look at and instantly tell whether you're overexposed, underexposed, or properly exposed. And if you're over or underexposed, then someone hit a dial or turned a button and your camera, one of the camera settings is off because that's the only way that's going to happen with this, uh, this approach. Uh, then we dial in and tell you how to get co accurate color every time. I show you how to set a custom white balance on your camera, which is how you do that, how to save all the settings. Uh, I kind of get into, a lot of doctors have asked me, hey, Bill, you know, I'd like the images as I shoot to be going over my Wi-Fi network to a computer in my office so they're ready and there, I don't have to download them. You can do that, and I kind of give you an introduction to what that's all about. Um, and then I do a, a demonstration. I take a series of photographs, and I, I evaluate them after. I say, okay, here's where I focused in the mouth and why. Here's how I did the whole thing. So you get a feel for how to do it. And you get all of that with the basic uh, subscription or enrollment which is 495. If you go to 795, um, you also get access to a private Facebook group that I moderate. So you can take the course, and by the way, there's about three hours of video content and all of that. Um, so you can take the course, and then as you practice, you can say, hey, Bill, I'm having trouble with this. What am I doing wrong? You can post an image. I can say, oh, that's simple. You're just, you don't have something set right. And so you can ask questions and get support. You're not left out in the, in the lurch. Then I have another level for 12, uh, excuse me, yeah, 1295 that says, okay, you get all that stuff, the video instruction, the private Facebook group, and I'll spend an hour of time with you online. I use uh, the Citrix GoToMeeting software uh, where I can um, show you things and you can show me things and, and we can communicate that way. So everybody in your office has access to all that thing, all that stuff uh, for every practice that enrolls. So all of your people that take dental images um, can take that same education. And you know, that's really the important thing. You want consistency and predictability in the process. You don't want one person making images one way and another making images another way, because that's when things start falling apart. Does that answer your question? You spoke at the uh, Rocky Mountain Dental Convention, and the United States has uh, like 268 different dental society branches that hire um, speakers like you and me to come in. Um, do you um, talk about your lecture because there might be a lot of lecture players. Um, Dental Town put up uh, on their online site. They we put up like 450 courses. They've been viewed over 600,000 times. But one of the most amazing things about it is the speakers put up an, an hour online site course. One guy put up a one-hour course on Endo and got booked 76 speaking engagements. He basically oh said. I, I put up a course on Dental Town and almost quit my endo practice. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so to meeting planners listening to you is when you come in and speak, is it a is it a half day course? Is it a full day course? A two day course? Tell, talk about your uh, your lecturing. Well, in that particular case, it was two one hour sessions. Um, so I, I believe the first one was how to choose the right dental camera for you because that was one big question they were getting and, and wanted some input on. And then I did a demonstration on how to take the extra oral 
uh, photographs, the headshots. I started out with on-camera lighting, moved to more, you know, off-camera stuff that you were talking about where you have separate lights and that sort of thing and showed them the progression of what their options were so that the, each doctor could make a smart decision for their, their practice. Well, do you, do you want to speak more? Oh, absolutely. I love to do that. I'm kind uh, of a ham, you know. Then, then you then you got to put you got to put a 1-hour course on dental time because uh I'll be happy what, to. what what yeah. happens um th this is what they all tell me. There's like 268 societies and the, it's all volunteers. So they'll get three guys they'll, they'll go out and say, "Okay, we need someone to pick the speakers for next year's meetings. I need three volunteers." And three sheepishly shy dentists put their hand up. They say, "Okay, you go find an endo one. You go find a Perio one, you go find a practice manager one, and yours under practice manager or marketing or whatever, and um, and they, they 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 then they're just told don't get the guy we had last year or the year before. So a lot of them just go to dental town. They say, okay, I need an endo speaker, and there's you know ten guys speaking for one hour, and they'll just watch ten. It's kind of like their their uh, their their movie star reel tape or whatever, you know. They're, <laughs> so so they list this guy for an hour, and they say he I, I like this guy. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm going to submit this guy's name. So it's really uh, – it's great marketing. And, again, I want um, – the reason I am called you and you didn't call me and the reason I seek you out is because um, um, the older guys uh, like us, they don't, they don't realize that their website – because, I mean, I got out of school. There was no internet. Uh, I, I practiced for years without you – know, I, I mean, I think I really didn't even – really understand what the internet was till I was 1998 and I was born in 62. And so many of these older people that built the skill, they're quality dentists, they've done 10,000 crowns and their website is something they got for $300 out of a box. Yeah. And um, I mean, so, some of them think they're doing great because they, uh, they uploaded a, a picture of themselves, you know, <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't, I don't, if, if I was going to get uh, hair transplants, uh, you know, I, um, I, I wouldn't go to some guy that just had a picture. I'd, I'd want to see cases, you know, e even the hair transplant commercials uh, that, what is it, Mosby that's always on. I always wonder if they, if, if the, my cable company sold the information that I bought because I see these so many times. But it, it's all before and after pictures. And right. you got to see before and after pictures. And then this has so much to do with marketing for new patients. Um, you're already paying for a website. So this is going to optimize something you've already paid for. Um, and, and that's another thing I want to talk about. Um, I think a missing link is some of the dentists that have learned dental photography don't know how to actually get those images on their website. Uh, that, and that, that's, that's a, the fastest growing problem now is someone will say, okay, I got some good before and after pictures, but how do I load these onto my website? And then they're like, um, you know, I bought this website five years ago at the Rocky Mountain Dental Convention and the guy's not even in business, you know. Right. Uh, or are you getting more involved in how to transfer that image from the computer to the, I mean, from the camera to the computer and taking it one step further and getting it up on the website or? Well, here's the thing. I, I haven't really started helping doctors do that, but in the third course that I offer, which is um, Easy Dental Image Management, that's the name of it, uh, I I do a one-on-one -on -one session where I actually make pre, what are called presets or canned export processes because these cameras now are making massive images, right? The megapixel rates on these things is just way beyond what any of us need, but that's what they are, so that's what we have to deal with. And when you go to taking that kind of, that size of an image and putting it on the web, you need to downsize it quite dramatically. And there's a way to do it that, um, how can I put it? it? It really keeps maintains the quality of the image, but puts it at a size where it won't take that page nine days to load, you know, when someone clicks on the page. Because you got basically, I think, three to five seconds to get someone's attention. And if your pages aren't loading fast enough because your image size is too big, then you got a problem. Um, so... I can, I've created export presets within this software that says, okay, these images I want to put on the web, I just say, all they have to do is select them, select that export preset, and boom, they're in a folder at the right size that they can have their IT person uh, easily put on, on their website. Yeah, it's pretty easy to upload. Uh, you, you know, you might it even, you, you might even uh, that, that ought to be your next frontier uh, to, uh, Dental photography made easy to dental photography marketing made easy or case acceptance or dream plan, the details, because it's just so important. You know what I mean? 
It really is, and I've thought about that. <laughs> yeah, and I see a lot of people on Facebook doing stuff that I don't know how. Like, like they'll take the before and after picture, but they'll they'll combine it to one picture. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to send that to a graphic artist to do that. You know, it's, it's real easy. Yeah, actually, you you should teach yeah. it more into that. And so, some of them are even doing four now. You know, uh, step one. You know, like um, uh, showing the the uh, the tooth, then it missing and healed up, and then the implant, and then the final restoration, and and you just. A consumer just looks at that one picture, which you'd want to – it doesn't matter if it's four pictures if you're putting on Facebook or your website. But if you're posting it on uh, Twitter or, uh, or or whatever, you know, it, it just looks really cool. I mean, you, a, a picture's worth a thousand words, and it really tells a story. It and does. So just sit there and say, wow, yeah, everyone – you know, lots of people lose a tooth, and I see now it's lost, and then I see this little metal thing sticking out, and now I see this beautiful tooth colored restoration – well, would it be easy, Howard, for you to um, select three or four images, however many you need, and just drag them into a template? That'd be nice. And then um, it just it puts them in the right spot. All the uh, framing is right, all that kind of stuff. And then you can export that straight to uh, size for Facebook or your website. I, I've created those kind of export presets for doctors too. And what my, uh, what my uh, assistant did – Oh, by the way, that's another lecture we could do. Dentaltown uh, puts on lectures. You know, we have our annual meeting, mm -hmm. which is every April. Uh, you might want to think about it if you want to speak there sometime. Uh, that's every – I'd love we're, to. We're coming up on our 15th year, but that the team doesn't have anything to do for a year. You know, so we're, <laughs> so we're doing little meetings throughout the year, and we're doing them right here in Phoenix because Phoenix has uh, 4 million people in the metro. It's uh, – well, you're, you're in uh, Denver, right? Correct. So what's bigger, Phoenix or Denver? Is that about the same size? Uh, probably about the same. We have about a little over five million in the state of Colorado, so yeah, you might be a little million. bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't want to admit it, but you have a better football team. But not this year. You lost your main guy. Hey, don't worry. Don't worry. Really? You got you got a plan to? How do you replace Manning? Uh, that's not going to be imp that's not going to be possible. So uh, yeah. everyone's going to have to step up. We all said that when Elway left. Yep. And, uh, I got to tell you something real quick. I moved here from Washington, D.C., and Elway was playing when I moved here. And, and I, I heard people talk, but just badmouth him when he had a bad game. And I, I would look at him and I'd say, are you crazy? Do you realize how good this guy is? So anyway, um, yeah, it's going to be tough to replace Manning. He was he was. And special. now doesn't Elway own like a dozen car lots or something? Is he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, are, they, are they named after him? Of course. Well, what, what's it called? <laughs> Uh, Elway Toyota, John Elway Toyota, or Chevy, or whatever. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I love I love Colorado. It's just it's so beautiful. Uh, we used to uh, we I, I took my four boys skiing in Breckenridge probably about, about a dozen times, mm -hmm. and I, I I love Breckenridge the most. I I never liked the the uh, rich hooty tooty Aspen because yeah. when you walk in with your four kids that were two, four, six, and eight, you know, I had four boys in sixty months. They looked at they, you could just see the fright in their face, like ah. <laughs> But you go to Breckenridge, that's the Walmart, IHOP, uh, Waffle House crowd, and kids are welcome, and you, the kids can do no harm, and my God, we love Breckenridge. That's it's just a great like, family town. It oh, it, 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 that's what it is. It's a family town, and Aspen's kind of more of a millionaire um, millionaire club. Would you it agree is. or not, really? Oh, absolutely. Vale, yeah. too. Vale, too. Yeah. Aspen Vale. See or um, be seen, those are the places to go. So I know I've already asked this, and I just want to repeat it kind of as a summary, because I only got you for five more minutes. Just uh. Um, what do you, what do you, on, on your courses, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of digital photography for dentists and meaning where, you know, they're just not getting it done. A lot of these guys that I go into, they got the camera, uh, they've had it for 10 years. It sits back there on their desk and they, they picked it up a few times and, and it's basically been sitting there for a decade. Why, what, what do you think the critical, what, what's the big challenge? Why is it just not getting done? Because it's too complicated. Uh, and it's intimidating. I mean, these are big things with lots of buttons and dials with uh, tons of menus, nested menu systems. And that's the main thing. I mean, I, so that's why I decided, well, the only way that this is going to work for me teaching other doc or teaching doctors is to make it simple and as mindless as possible. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all. I want it to be a tool that you can pick up and use to do your job. I don't want a doctor to have to become a photographer to do dental photography. Um, so 
I've noticed that a lot of doctors have been trained to use settings in their cameras that don't necessarily give accurate and consistent results. And, um, you know, so I sat down, I really thought through how to set these things up so and save the settings so that, hey, that that person, the doctor you just described, is going to be able to dial these in, pick the camera up, and make beautiful intraoral or extraoral images every time. Well, that that would be amazing, and that's why I called you. And um, I, I think um, I hope this podcast draws a lot of attention to you and your website. Um, I think if you did a one-hour course with I, I'm Howard Ferran, so I'm Howard at Dentaltown. The guy that does all the online C is Howard Goldstein. So he uh, was the second Howard. So he goes by Hogo at Dentaltown.com, H-O-G-O. Right. Um, but I think if you put a, a one-hour uh, course on there, um, and then you could say at the end, you know, for uh, for more, go to my website where we got, you know, um, more and more and more. Or um, and then Marie Leland. These are all under contacts on Dentaltown. Marie Leland's the one who puts the uh, um, courses on. If you want to speak at a town meeting, or if you want to uh, just do a, a solo show here in Phoenix, because uh, like, say, Phoenix got 4 million people. There's 3,800 dentists just in this town. Wow. And, it, and it's a huge favorite town. I mean, you got the Scottsdale Center um, up in Scottsdale. You got, I mean, there's just, uh, dentists just love it. I, it's probably because there's 211 golf courses. There in you go. Fact, most yeah. of my Denver buddies, like Rick Kirshner, that owns Comfort Dental, I mean, he comes, every time I see him, he's only down here for one reason, ain't see me. It's 211 golf courses. So dentists love golf, so that, that might be something. But, uh, again, homies, uh, I know you get excited when you get a pull of a wisdom tooth. I know you get double excited when you see a failing root canal that needs a retreat. I know you love to work with your hands, and we were born to fix teeth, and we don't want to wear all these hats in accounting and finance and marketing and photography is just another damn hat to wear. I personally delegate all this to Jan. She's been with me 29 years. This is her baby, not mine. Uh, but – you got to start doing this to get your case presentation better, to get mm -hmm. your case acceptance better. I don't think you're a good dentist when you only fix 38% of your cavities. I don't. And then you tell me the economy is bad because of Obama and, and Afghanistan and Putin in the Ukraine. Well, the dentist right next to you in the same building has the exact same number of patients and is doing twice the revenue as you. Because you're running a 38% close, and she's running a 68% close, and Jan uh, has been running me a 82 to 85% close. Because I don't even believe in treatment. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm old school. I don't like to talk money. I don't know how I can say, oh, "Bill, you need a root canal." Then turn around and say, "But you got to give me $1,250 first, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I just tell you what you need, and the intraoral camera um, helps. The digital photography, how everything else, but you got to get your clothes right, uh, right to two out of three because I believe right now it's one out of three, and I believe another one out of three. They're just the type of you know, go to your own family reunion and you understand that one out of three aren't going to do anything for any reason. You know, they're just they're just they're just people. People are talking monkeys, but you can get another one out of three to do treatment if you present it right, you sell it right, and you know when you say selling is a four letter word. I believe, I believe if a fireman um, acted like a dentist or a policeman acted like a dentist, they wouldn't be chasing the bad guys. They wouldn't be putting That's out right. the fires. And dental photography, madeeasy.com, is going to do it. And if you don't want to do this, I mean, what is the intro price? Four ninety five. I don't even know what I do in my office that's that cheap. I mean, a crown's a thousand, a root canal's a thousand. What is four ninety five? Two fillings. So you're talking about thirty minutes worth of work. And then make your and then don't make your assistant do it because I believe that what was the old uh, the old uh, story where the guy was painting his fence and he didn't want to paint it so then he sold it to his friends and then his friends all wanted to paint it remember that little I not was that I don't remember that Huckleberry Finn Tom something. anyway oh oh yeah 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 okay. but uh, but the but the bottom line is just go to your staff I mean who's who's taking all the selfies and putting them on social media there's someone in there. That's taking 10 times more selfies than someone else. And just uh, present it to the whole team. Say, I need someone uh, to take a day off, come to work, do this course, get on the phone with Bill Moore, and you're going to have to figure out the whole solution. We're going to have to take it to pictures, getting them off the camera, putting me on Facebook, putting them on our website, 
showing them, um, categorize them as cases, like here's implants, here's crowns, here's bleaching, here's whatever, whatever's on your menu that you're doing. And if you could just get your your new patients, uh, I mean your treatment plan acceptance from the, the average one out of three to two out of three, you just doubled your practice. And and, and I, um, I, I, I just think it's sad when a kid comes in, has two cavities, and then you don't get the case presentation done, and then you see him three years later. Now he needs two root canals. And, um, you know, so I think what you're doing is extremely important, Bill. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, spending a day with me. I know you only did it because we're bald brothers. We're, uh, <laughs> we're uh, brothers from the same mother. But uh, thank you so much for spending an hour with me and my homies today. And well, uh, thanks I? for all you do for dentistry. Yeah, take Well, you're welcome. And if I might um, talk about the offer. Absolutely. For your folks. And I spent a ton of money on this graphic, so um, I have to show it. If you um, <laughs> sign up for the class by July 29th, high. by July 29th, uh, I'll send you a, a link to get $100 off the uh, enrollment for the course. So you just send an email to me at dentalphotographymadeeasy at gmail.com, put in the subject fair and offer, I'll give you $100 off the mid-tier or upper level version of the course. Come on, why did you say fair and offer? Why didn't you say Matt Damon or Leonardo DiCaprio or all those, all those other guys that everyone confused me with? Hey, if he's got that offer at 29th, then we should put this this drop this one out next because uh right now we 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 usually tape about a month ahead so how, oh, many, how many do we got in the queue right now that. we have like 50 in the queue so this would not have come out for 50 days that's past your expiration date so i'll just bump can you bump his out next okay we'll bump yours out next that's that's your bold brother in favor and um and, uh, hope, hope, hope to see you at autonomy thanks for uh posting on the boards uh thanks for all you do because like i say the uh you're so important because we got to get more of our patients with disease to get treatment. Absolutely. That's well, just good dentistry. And, and, and if it takes photography to be a good dentist, then that's all we got to do. Well, I'm happy to do my part. All right, buddy. Thanks again for spending an hour with me. Okay. Thank you, Howard. Have a great day. Bye-bye.